I command healing to walk right now. At the count of seven, do what you couldn't do in the name of Jesus. I reverse the power working against you. Jesus mighty name. You know this. You notice that the power of your what you call impossibility possibility is a possibility before the God you serve. That thing that the world has used to laugh at you, it will become a testimony. It is your faith that will see you through your wilderness. I release the miracles of your need into your hands this morning. Somebody shout, it is mine. Welcome to my segment, Moment of Recovery. My name is Pastor Tony Oko. I'm so glad to come your way today. I'll be sharing so much from the Word of God, a lot of teaching I'll do today. And I want you to listen because this season is our season of prayer. The ember months are rolling in. And when the ember months starts to tick, before you know it, the year has come to a close. When you hear September, it's as good as saying December. My prayer for every one of you hearing the sound of my voice is that this year you will finish strong. I pray for you that your children will be protected, your children will be in safety, your family, your wife, everyone that matters to you, that is connected to you as a loved one. I pray that the hand of God will go with them and keep them. And I also pray that every project you put your hand to do, God will prosper it. Now, when it's ember months, there are a lot of challenges on ground for many. A lot of people are still trying to articulate um, their dreams, trying to communicate it. Some people are, are yet to uh, see the reality of their dreams. Some people are yet to get help, the platform to, to, to see the manifestations of their expectations. And a lot of people set out from January to see certain things are at the verge of either breaking or many could at this point be celebrating. But you see, it might be so good for you now, but you also need to pray for protection because you see, we're going to look at this prayer season from two angles. If God has blessed you, pray to keep you alive and to keep that blessing he's given to you. And then two, if you have not been blessed, we need to come to God and ask for help. It's very vital we put all these things into consideration because we, whether we're blessed or we're not blessed, we need God. The man who has been blessed needs protection. The man that is yet to break through needs to, uh, to, to get the help of God, needs in divine intervention. And I'll be sharing with you how and what prayer will do for you this season. In our church, we began a 21-day fasting. We'll be running a 21-day program tagged Hoshama. Now, Hoshama simply means Jehovah hears. Um, we coined it from the Hebrew word Hoshama, Jehovah hears. People who have come to a point that they are beginning to be skeptical. Does God hear prayers? He does. My own dear younger brother came for one of our Hoshama programs several years ago. And he had just left a job and he joined us on this 21 day prayer and fasting. I think the third or the fourth day it was a prophetic word I was giving for him. And today that prophecy has come to pass. And so many people over the years have been helped with Hoshama. Hoshama has been a great program because they came and they were crying to God, asking God for help, and God gave it to them. It's my prayer for every one of you today that God Almighty will visit with you, and not just you, your household. Now, whether you are a member of Sovereign World Church or not, if you are not settled down to fix this season as a period of prayer, as we run the last phase of the year, I want you to put it in your itinerary to join us for more. If you have been following my broadcast and I've been a great blessing to you, I encourage you to join us as a day of recovery or recovery broadcast family. Join us as we pray. It's a season of prayer and I want to see God move in your life. Now, when we talk about prayer, first of all, 
we need to uh, get it right by getting closer to God. You don't start to go, you don't come to God in prayer with just one thing in mind, breakthrough. You see, when we start from that angle, then we've gotten it all wrong. God desires a relationship with us. He wants us to draw close. He wants us to, to be intimate with Him. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of James chapter 4, it says, draw nigh unto God, He will draw nigh unto you. James 4 verse 8. But before then in verse 7, it says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. See, the victory we experience in prayer is a byproduct of our fellowship with God. And as we begin to pray this season, we need to understand the importance of strengthening our fellowship. Power in spiritual warfare is generated when we spend time in building intimacy. See, one of the reasons people go see people, prophets, uh, prayer contractors, is because there's a distance. And when the time of need comes, they find it difficult to connect because there's already a void, there's a vacuum. And that's why many people, even when they go before God in prayer, they get so, they get so frustrated because there's an emptiness. It's not a beauty. So we need to draw closer and become more intimate because that's where the power is generated. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God, then resist the devil. And he will flee. And they say, draw now to him, he will draw now to you. See, when you go to God, don't just start with fighting witches and wizards. This period of your life and time, Lord, I love you. I appreciate you spending time in fellowship, speaking in tongues and praying, and then bridging the gap of communication. When that is in place, then you are just at the verge of breaking the backbone of darkness. I'll be back after this time out. And please stay tuned because there's so much I want to share with you on this broadcast tonight. Shepherd to the sheep, Jehovah hears when we cry. Hoshama. As we step into the month of September, God has asked me to call for a 21 day prayer and fasting. It's called Hoshama. That's what the program is tagged. What's the meaning of Hoshama? Hoshama means Jehovah hears. Hoshama, the 21 day fasting and prayer meeting, holds daily at the Sovereign Word Church. Date September 14th to October 4th. 5 30 p.m. daily and 7 30 a.m. on Sundays at Sovereign World Church, 11 Awari Street, Ilewalaji, First Town, in Wales and Lagos. Don't continue the ember months without making a contact with heaven. As we lift up our voice, we serve a God who hears where we cry. Hoshama, Jehovah hears. He will hear you when you call. Welcome back. Thank you for staying, you know, staying on. And so, like I was saying, my, my, my children, I desire to have fellowship with them. And in fellowship, I begin to locate their needs. I begin to empower them. I, I begin to bless them. All parents are like that. You are like that. You're watching me right now. You want closeness with your children, with your family. No father wants to come back from an outing and then all the wife wants to do is just drop a bill on his table. No. Every father wants intimacy, wants closeness. And then as your family come around you, your spouse, your children, and your plane, then you begin to look out for their needs. And you begin to come around them to see to it that their faith needs are met. God wants you to have his best. 
God wants you to be protected. But he says, if you want me to come around you, you first of all draw nigh unto me. Come close. Come close. Some of you watching this broadcast right now, you're so far. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? It's a level of intimacy you develop with the Father. You're protected. You are kept. And the wicked one cannot touch you, touch your family. Because there's a presence around you. And the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible talked about how Israel came out of Egypt. It talked about the presence of God. And he said the rams skipped, the mountains, they skipped, everything bowed, gave way. River Jordan backed out. The Bible says, because of the presence of God. This period of our lives and time, this prophetic time, September, October, November, December, you need the presence of God all around you. And in that light, I also want you to see the need for repentance from sins, because one of the things that will clog our path, you know, the psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. If you are part of this 21 days prayer fasting, we, we, I want you to, at this point in your, your life, begin to look inward at those things that could hinder you from getting the, bless, the best from God. You see, there are people who are battling with witches and wizards, witches and wizards, witches and wizards, witches and wizards, wizard, not recognizing that there are certain things that are withdrawn from you when your relationship with God is destroyed. The present day church, people are not interested in working on their relationship. Rather, they are more interested in spiritual warfare and grab and claim the blessings. And this is one of the reasons why people are not even looking in what to deal with the things that could be the factors that is depriving them or that brought them to a place of deprivation. Sin can take from you the blessings of God. The Bible shall we continue sin that the grace of God may abound. So repentance is very important. This is now in Proverbs chapter 28, I read from 13. It says, He that covered his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Confess it, forsake it, to have mercy. You, you can't be seeking God now for breakthrough this period of the year and not really look at the same factor. Say when you confess and then forsake it, you will have mercy. Now look at Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. He said, Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld good things from you. So your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withheld good things from you. So your, your sin, the sins you commit deliberately that you have not dealt with can keep good things from you. You're watching this broadcast right now. The woman in your home, is she your wife? Yeah, well, some of you watching me right now, you're a contractor, you're a businessman, you're wondering why you're not breaking evil. You have mistresses outside, you have women. Yet you're struggling to make ends, ends meet. Yet you are so engrossed in immorality. Some of you here, you waste all your energies, carrying women, drinking from one place to the other. Then there are some women here, you're not faithful, you're not straightforward. You just, see, this is not work. They have a way of ripping you off. And you see, Satan now takes advantage of these things and block your way. And for these blessings that God has apportioned for you, to fall on your table, you need to get rid of all these things. So let's not just be looking about at, at the fact that there are things that have not come, or blessings that have not flowed the way we expect, but let's begin to deal with the same factor. I believe God for you today that as you're watching me, don't turn that down. You might not enjoy what I'm saying today, but you don't need to enjoy it. It's the truth. It's the truth that sets free. Give up on sin. Whatever you've been doing since you've been doing for a long time, where has it taken you to? It just, it has just, it has deprived you. You know that people today, they are where they are, they are stagnated because of sin. God says, my hands are not short, I cannot save me, neither is my ear too heavy. He said, but your iniquity has separated me and you. So why don't we just put this in? We cannot ascribe all the delays, attacks to witches and wizards. What about the things we're doing that we need to deal with? I pray for you today that God Almighty will help you to search in what? Breakthrough starts from within. Transformation starts within. When you are fasting, fasting breaks you and then aligns you to receive the blessings. Fasting doesn't change God or bend the hand of an unwilling God because God is always willing to bless. 
No. It brings you to a place where your the things that hinder God from blessing you is taken out of the way. That's why the book of Isaiah chapter 40 says, prepare you the way of the Lord. He said, let every mountain be brought down, every valley be exalted, the crooked paths be made straight. He said, there the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it. So except we begin to straighten the crooked parts of our life, the glory of God will not come. That glory that will rest upon your father's house, that will make men to come pay your diary, that will cause projects that they were began to be finished, that glory that will come upon you, that the things you started out this year that was little has become great, let it rest upon you today in Jesus' name. So please, I encourage you, take this time out to pray and fast, look inward, draw closer to God. Stop going through prayer contractors. Stop looking out for who to send your name to for prayer. Why don't you draw close? We are becoming so weak, so lazy. We are becoming so laid spiritually. Our generation, we want people to do it. People are not really working you know, around the clock to build that intimacy that should they should have with God. Rather, they are contracting it. Everything is being contracted. May the God of heaven help you this time to look inward. I'll be back. Please don't touch that. There's so much we need to talk about. Like the shepherd to the sheep, Jehovah hears when we cry. Hoshama. As we step into the month of September, God has asked me to call for a 21-day prayer and fasting. It's called Hoshama. That's what the program is tied. What's the meaning of Hoshama? Hoshama means Jehovah hears. Hoshama, the 21-day fasting and prayer meeting, holds daily at the Sovereign Word Church. Date September 14th to October 4th. 5.30 p.m. daily and 7.30 a.m. on Sundays at Sovereign Word Church, 11 Awari Street, Ilewalaji, First of Edward, Lagos. Don't continue the ember months without making a contact with heaven. As we lift up our voice, we serve a God who hears where we cry. Hoshama, Jehovah hears. He will hear you when you call. Welcome back. You know, when you read James, you find that James, in James chapter 5, verse 13, he said something here that brings to mind all that I've been trying to communicate. He said, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up from raise him up and if he had committed sins they shall be forgiven him you see he's talking about sickness here he's talking about prayers and then he said if he has committed sin that sin can bring about sickness in your life and then he goes on to say in verse 16 says confess your faults one to another and pray one to another that ye may be healed the effect of fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much confess your sins to one another if he has committed sin shall be forgiven him and then the Lord shall raise him up. See, God is now saying that for the healing of the sick here to be affected, the sin has to be taken out by forgiveness and then God will raise him up. So you need to recognize the importance of dealing with the sin factor. You know, it can, the sin can open the way to, to sickness and disease. Be amazed, I've seen many times when sins were converted, sins of unforgiveness, bitterness and all, and malicious or perversion. I was in the U.S. recently and I was praying for a guy who was deeply involved in homosexual activity. Always sickly. Doctors have treated and treated. He's been to the best hospitals. He has not improved. When he came to a meeting by prophecy, I saw what God, I saw a pig in the, in, 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 in the, in the mud, you know, and I said to him, I said, sir, I don't know, there's something just not right. There's something dirty. And I said, are you into anything perverted or a perversion, any form of perversion? He was looking at me. I said, are you into any sexual perversion? What is sexual perversion? A man is supposed to meet with a woman, not man to man or woman to woman. All these things can block your way. And he opened up to me later that he's a homosexual. 
a Christian. He even lives in the church compound. He's the one that keeps the keys of the church. I prayed for him. I cast out those devils from him, took him through the sinner's prayer, and I led him to Christ again. And I prayed for him. I traveled. I was told recently he just broke some, you know, some new grounds in his business. He's into construction. Right now, the pastor told me for the last two, three weeks, he's paid his tithe and his health has been restored. He's looking far more better. The sores and injuries and all, some strange scars on his body and you know, those funny, funny things I saw, they're gone. And the guy is well now. And he's so glad that somebody came to town to show him the way out. All we needed to do was to deal with the sin. And then we kept, kept moved to the place of blessings right now. What are the things you see that clog in your way? Listen to me. Sin is just too cheap for you to lose your inheritance or your birthright. It was, it was in Genesis, when you connect it to the book of Hebrews, you find that Esau was a fornicator. He was such a man given to his, to the appetite, the dictates of his stomach. He traded everything. Many of us have done that. We've traded greatness for lust, the lust of the flesh. And you're so small, stranded, unachieved. I pray for you that God Almighty will touch your life and turn your life around in Jesus' mighty name. You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, you know, the Bible says, if the heavens are short and there be no rain, he said, my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven and I will hear their land. So if the heavens are short, there's a financial blocking. There must be something wicked you're doing that you're not tightening or you're not living right. He said, if they turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. What are the wicked ways? What are the things you're doing that do not glorify God? That is hindering God from healing your life, touching your life. The embalmers are ruling. Look in the world. Let's pray. Father, I've spoken your mind to my viewers today who are watching right now. I ask you to touch them. Heal the ones that are sick. I break the spirit of sickness and disease over their life. Move mightily, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless them. The year is just coming to a close. Raise help for them. Raise help, my Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be all manner of breakthroughs. Breakthroughs, I ask in Jesus' name. Now as I close, I want to pray with you. Lead you before God's presence. Deal with issues. The theme of this program is tagged dealing with the enemy behind the scene. There are enemies behind the scene. And I don't know what the enemy is in your life. Behind every problem or affliction, there's always a spirit. The question now is, who is aware? So many people don't know that they are puppets in the hand of an unseen power. How many people are aware of what's going on? And I want to pray for you that this program will open you. It's going to be a very powerful prayer and fasting program, which will mix with a lot of blend from the prophetic to the healing sessions. The prayer lines for deliverance, because a lot of people need to be delivered from the enemy behind the scene. Now, every day, a better headquarter church will be open. My pastors and deacons and ministers will be on ground as we bring you before God's presence. Now, make time and attend this prayer. It will be transformation. It's time for who Shama Jehovah hears. The Lord bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Whatever is around you, whatever is in you, tormenting this child. Come out! How are you breaking their concentration? The baby. The baby. Their business. Their business. They can't make the work. They can't get a job. Yes. She's BSC holder. She's a BSC holder. I'm shattering the husband's business. How is our baby doing? The baby of Monday. Is the baby still okay? She's fine and plain. Come, let them see. Give Jesus a big hand. The child is fine and is plain. Give the Lord a big, big hand. See the baby now. See the difference.
Thank you, Jesus. Woke up this morning now. You've been very ill for a long time. Your brother came to thank me this morning on the phone. You've been to several hospitals? Yes, sir. All right, right now I'm feeling very You woke up very, very strong. Okay, yes. And this thing has been on for how many months? Uh, it started in June. It stopped. Then it came up about um, six days ago. I was taken to about two hospitals. They diagnosed so many things until yesterday when I came to When I got home after the deliverance, deliverance yes, I felt good. I slept well. I was not, I've, not, I've not been able to go to the toilet for like a week now. This morning I went to the toilet and um, this morning again I got a text inviting me for an interview tomorrow morning, 8.45 a.m. How many of you know that there is the mercy side of God? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped because somebody had to arouse the mercy by shouting. Didn't Jesus see him when he passed? He saw him. But the man had to arouse the mercy. He had to arouse the son of David, have mercy upon me. He's, and Jesus stood still. Bring him. Then he still asked him, What do you want me to do? Now, just as we arouse the mercy side of God, that is how we are also going to arouse the compassionate side of God, the grace side of God, and also the vengeance side of God. This week, your enemies will sleep, they will not wake up.